so the collapse of MetaZoo has been nothing but an absolute disaster. It's been a textbook case of egotism, narcissism. I mean, they had a really big company. I didn't actually realize how big the company was. It was doing, at one point in time, $21 million of revenue. Uh, Nick over at Nick Strength from Pokemon, he actually has a number of $50 million that Mike Waddell told him the previous year. So if it went from 50 to 21 to 7 to half a million dollars, and now they're $1.7 million into debt. This is an absolute collapse that um, bad management. There might be some systematic problems. Like, you don't collapse this fast, this hard. In fact, during the Hello Kitty, um, they are, they already started to go down to zero. You already saw the income drop from, or the revenue drop from $21 million to $7 million. They understood that they were collapsing. Um, when they ha were on the Netflix show, they knew. They knew. Yet, they were still saying stuff. The Netflix dude was still saying stuff like, Hey, this card game could overtake Magic in 5 to 10 years. Magic the Gathering. One of the best, if not the best, I mean, you can argue 1 and 2 is Pokemon and Magic always, right? Yu-Gi-Oh! is always free in terms of volume, revenue, whatever you want to, indicators you want to look at. Age, I mean, Magic's been around forever. And just have this MetaZoo thing. It's just a disgrace to compare MetaZoo to Pokemon or Magic. But they even told the bitter end they were comparing it to Pokemon and comparing it to Magic. I guess the ending is kind of fitting, right? It's uh, one dude who is not really that knowledgeable about TCG. It looks like he's like in some type of consignment company saying that, oh, look at this card. And Mike Waddell with the arch artist. I mean, the ending couldn't be more fitting than this. It's Pancho, the guy who draws all the alpha investment promos and artwork. It's Mike Waddell, and it's a guy who has no idea about the TCG market. So when they told him that this Poncho signed original art is worth $25,000, he believed it. And they have a little, boop, $25,000 at the end. I mean, this couldn't be more fitting for the demise of MetaZoo than on Netflix, right? You have all of the elements combined. Now, what what do I look at the bank? I, I see a mess, man. It is a mess. Um, you know... No, I'll reach out to Nick. I've reached out to Nick, and it's a mess for a few different reasons. Um, a, there's 10 different investors, and Mike Waddell doesn't actually own 50% of it or 51%. He owns 45.5%. Steve Aoki owns 45%. So Mike Waddell owns 0.5% more than Steve Aoki. I don't know what Steve Aoki is contributing here, but that worries me that somebody owns very, very close to the guy filing for bankruptcy. And if he wants to contest this, he absolutely can. And Steve Aoki, for sure, his dad did Benny Hanna's, has an excellent plateau of uh, army of lawyers, right? So if Steve Aoki straight up just wants to buy this, he probably already had the opportunity, but he's probably waiting for bankruptcy so he can get it. So there is $200,000 of debt that has assets tied to it. Even though I think the Shopify, the asset is probably just a website, right? That Let the website go for $150,000. That's not worth, the website is not worth $150,000. I own a marketing agency. We can do the Shopify website for $1,500, right? Not $150,000. So first of all, that's very alarming that they owe Shopify that amount of money. Shopify is just a website platform. Like how the F do you owe them that much money? Have you not paid them at all? Like that would be my only explanation or... What type of contract do you sign with them that, you know, like $150,000, assuming it's a year or two years, I, I'm going to assume that Shopify would want to collect after a few months, right? That's a lot of money that they owe. The distribution company, I kind of get it. Storage is expensive in America, especially out in California. Okay, that 56000 makes sense. This is a nightmare of a scenario for whoever's going to buy it um, legally. Because you have 10 different investors or 10 different equity holders, uh, including two different artists, including Craig, who owns 5%. Who the hell is Craig? And you have two major shareholder owners. One of them may not actually want to go to bankruptcy, and that would be Steve Aoki. Uh, one of them is a lot smarter than the other one because he put his limited liability, he put another company, not his own name, 
in MetaZoo. So there's something called piercing the corporate veil. I'm not going to explain it too much in detail here, but it may apply to here depending on their receipts and the expenses. Like Nick said, there's a lot of things unknown. I think there will be a lot of things continue to be unknown because when a business goes under, no one's happy when a business goes under, guys. It's not a cause for celebration. It is actually a very sad event. But it's accumulation of things, right? It doesn't go under for no reason. It goes under for many, many different reasons. I don't know, man. This company is wild. Uh, it is wild. Uh, I actually would have rather have saw less revenue and then therefore it would make more sense that $1.7 million debt would kneel over the company. And the type of debt, pre-orders, customers, players they owe money to, that stuff is never getting paid. I hope everyone knows that. If you if you have a streamer kit native, unless that new owner sends you something out of his own goodwill or his or her own goodwill, you're not getting any money. Like this really seemed, in my opinion, to be very scam like with the pre orders. Because at some point in time they knew this company had massive debt and wasn't making when you go from twenty one million to seven million and then twenty twenty four so far less than half a million dollars you don't think you have problem you don't think you feel the money like leaving the like you don't think you got problems like i wouldn't be shocked if their expenses went up during the last few years like they made 21 million dollars in one year where the hell did that money go like you know whose pockets does that money go to um it's without i mean it's just a mess maybe Operating a card game is a lot more difficult than I I believe it is. That could be it. You know, I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, I have no idea. I've never operated a card game before. But if it's anything like a card shop, you got payroll, you got employees, you have the artists, right? Um, I had a full-time manga artist on my staff, my marketing agency, uh, to do logo work. This is a, you know, and... and and then you look at the Netflix show where they are so happy. Mike Waddell is so happy, so stress-free. At this point in time, you know something is wrong because of the massive decline. According to Mike, he made $50 million a year previous. So he went from 50 to 21 to 7 to half a mil. Like, what? And you're still appearing on Netflix. You're still valuing your poncho original art at $25,000. You're still, this dude is still believing and you allowed him to believe that it mattered, MetaZoo would overtake Pokemon someday and it could overtake Magic in just five to ten years. Yikes, man. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure like outside of Nick Strange from Pokemon, everyone else here is like delusional as hell, man. Like from the CEO down to the content creators, like. This ru ruined people's lives, guys. Like that 1.7 million, if it stands like it does today, I don't think it will. I think more creditors will come in. Um, that 1.7 million is really just 1.5 million of customer not paying customers and players. And they did that at the very end. It reminds me of Clutch Cards, where they knew they were going out of business and they did a massive pre order. They collected all their money for one last hurrah. Uh, to buy, you know, Lamborghinis to go to the F1 racetrack, and then they close down business. They file for bankruptcy. That's unfortunately the people like. Unfortunately, that's that's what it is. It's the small people. It's the customers, and not the small people and small people. I'm talking about like the people owed 100 to 150 to 200. Maybe they ordered multiple streamer kits. You know, four or five five hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. Unfortunately, they're not going to see a dime of it back. Um, and that's the uh, game they play. And they'll just start a new company and they'll do the same thing. As long as they can afford the lawyer to do it. 